<laughs> well, it's good to be here tonight. Amen? Before I get started tonight, oh, how many is going to camp meeting this year? You know you're going to camp meeting. Just stand up. Amen? How many is wanting to go to camp meeting but not signed up yet? Look at y'all. Y'all need to be there. All right, you may be, y'all may be, see, I, the reason I had you do that is, oh, every year is a special year at camp meeting. And uh, this year is going to be really, really special. And God just showed me what's going to happen on the way to church tonight. There is going to be, uh, for those there, and you need, let me just back up, those that are going, you need to make preparation. Remember in Joshua when, when the, the, the uh, children of, of Israel were crossing over to the other side? And Joshua went before the camp there and said, prepare yourself, because tomorrow we're going to cross over. One word he used there, he says, sanctify yourself. That's to set yourself apart. And so you that are going to camp meeting this year, I want you to take some time. We got what, uh, what is Miss Sheila here tonight? She's not here. All right, 15 days. She always knows how many days it is camp meeting. Oh, in 15 days, we'll be at camp meeting. Amen? And we got 15 days to prepare ourselves. So we're going to have a, th a three-day prayer starting on uh, Sunday night. Uh, what night is that, Sue? 21st, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Be a corporate-type prayer. But individually, I want you to begin to pray and begin to seek God and um, set yourself apart. Take some days in there and, and do some fasting, maybe fast for on TV or food. I mean, whatever, just have God lead you because it's, it's going to be important. Remember, Jesus says, um, with what measure you give, that measure will be given back to you. And so what measure you put in the, these days of preparation, listen very carefully, what days you put in for for preparation is going to have a significant meaning of what happens you at camp meeting this year. Because God showed me there, there's going to be an impartation, an individual impartation. And those that have prepared themselves for this time, this hour, this season, there's going to be an impartation. It's not going to be like years in the past when you came back and you had these testimonies, you were excited. And you, 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 that's going to be part of it too. But there is going to be such a strong anointing upon your life that just like the disciples in the book of Acts, they shook the world around them. There's going to be an impartation individually. It will vary by how much preparation you and I put into it. And so begin to prayer, prepare yourself because there's going to be a strong, strong anointing there to impart the power of God into your life. Amen? And God's already shown me some people <laughs> when they come back. Amen? All righty. Uh, I, we'll probably have to share that Sunday morning, but we're glad you're going. If you're not going, you still got time to sign up. we got some special guests here from all the way from Rochester, New York, passing through, going to California. If y'all should be going back back east <laughs> in about two weeks, uh, we have a camp meeting that's just right north of Albuquerque, New Mexico, about an hour and a half. So y'all just drift right up there, got a big chuck wagon, big tent, and and just get right in on the deal with us. All right, we'd love to have you. All right, um, don't have to turn there, but I, Luke, we, this is, uh, I wasn't going to preach this tonight. In fact, I'm not going to, this is not going what I was going to preach on Sunday morning. I'm still going to preach Sunday morning. This message be, but it'll be part three now instead of part two. So it, we're going to give you the keys tomorrow or Sunday morning about how to walk in spiritual authority. But I was, um, I was praying about tonight's message, and here's what God showed me. And I believe it will have some significance in your life. In Luke chapter 9, don't turn there, but oh, unless you want to. Luke chapter 9, verse 1, the same thing in, in Matthew chapter 10. Jesus says, uh, Luke just recorded a little different. He says, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them, or delegated them, power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. The word power there is the word dunamis, which is all uh, the very same power in Acts 10.30, where God anointed Jesus with 
Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed the devil. Very same power. And Jesus delegated this power. We know in Matthew chapter 28 that, that God gave Jesus all authority, all power uh, on this earth and in heaven. The word, the root word where this power dunamis comes from means ability. See, you must, in order to release power, you must have, have the ability to release the power. Now, when you put these together in the word dunamis, it means the ability to do the miraculous. To do the miraculous. So, John 14, 12 again. Jesus said, these, these works I do, you should do also. And greater works because I go to the Father. And we know that by going to the Father there, there was an impartation from, from God to, to, to Jesus that he released uh, to his disciples. And Jesus, uh, the, the same anointing is here today. It's here tonight. And it's the power uh, to do the miraculous. He gave them the power to do the miraculous. The word authority there, it says power and authority is the word exousia, and that's what we're talking about uh, last week, last Sunday morning. If you weren't here, you need to get the CD. But, uh, we'll talk about it Sunday morning, but exousia power. And that many times you see these two words, power and authority, interchanged through the Bible, so you need to know what it says in the Greek. Here, power is dunamis, and authority is exousia. Exousia is a le- legitimate right to use something uh, in other words, they have a legitimate, legitimate right to use the power that God imparted to them. Jesus delegated his fo- followers the right to use God's power, but also he gave them the power to back it up. Here's what he gave them power to do. It says right here, it says he gave them power over all the enemy. All the enemy. We know this scripture that, that, that Jesus defeated the enemy. 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose, the Son of God, Jesus, was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen? Well, I believe that when Jesus came and he destroyed the works of the devil, they destroyed. But we know scripture through 1 Peter that, that he is, he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so the presence is, is all around us. But he can only attack where he has an opening. You don't give him no opening, he can't defeat you. And also it says in Luke 9, 1, that, uh, verse 2, or not just 9, 1, says, He gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Some translations say he, to heal all diseases. Where the word uh, rhema or or uh, Rafa in the means to heal, not spiritually, but, but physically. And anytime you see heal in the Bible there, it's usually talking about physical healing. All right. Many Christians live a defeated life because they've never grasped the revelation of the authority and the power they have access to. See, many Christians live a very defeated life. They get run over by the devil. Everything comes around and runs over them. They always are in the circumstance, barely get by, always having trouble. And it's not that they don't have the power and authority because we know that God delegated. We talk about Sunday that there's intrinsic, intrinsic authority, which means that it's supreme. And God is the only one who has intrinsic authority. Otherwise, he has authority in all, all the universe, all, over all creation. And only he can give authority. And he delegated authority. All, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, all authority has been given to me on heaven, in heaven and on earth. And so as a Christian, when you, when you had a God encounter, when you became a new creation, uh, you didn't get a downsized Holy Spirit inside of you. You, you got the full dose. And all the power that's there is available to you. It's just like, you know, we got we got trillions of, of brain cells, but we only use very few of them. Amen? Some don't use any of them. 
but they are all available to us. And we have all this, as a, as a believer, you got all this power available to us, and we're going to talk about Sunday how to, how to tap in the power of God and flow in the power of God. And for you that's, that's going to, to camp me, you're just going to get a head start. Amen? But most Christians, they never have the revelation. They never got a hold of the revelation. They, they, they believe there's a, the power of God is available. We, we, we've seen the power of God move. We heard a tremendous testimony Sunday morning by a man that was completely healed of, of diabetes. and have, His foot didn't have to be amputated on. His blood sugar dropped down. His, his, his blood pressure dropped down. His eyesight come back to his right eye. You know, only God can do that. That's the power of God. And so, uh, but most Christians believe in the power, or some, some don't even believe in the power, but they don't really have the revelation that they can walk in the power of God. And you, will never, you will never understand the authority. We're talking about the spiritual authority of the believer. You will never understand the authority of the believer with your intellect. So you, you, you can't, the things of God are foolishness to the natural mind. You, you can't figure out how, we can't even figure out how, how God lives inside of us, but we know, uh, we do by faith that he's inside of us. Holy Spirit lives inside of us. But your intellect can't, you can't, you can't envision, thank you, Bob. You can't get the revelation that, oh, uh, that the power of God's inside of you to be released. Uh, the only way you can get it is through spiritual revelation, and you must believe it by faith. You got to believe it by faith. How'd you get saved by faith? So you, you got to. How do you get the Holy Spirit by faith? How do you get filled by the Holy Spirit by faith? How do you get healed by faith? How do you walk in victory by faith? Knowing that you have power and authority is not enough. So you you, you can you can know that oh as a Christian you I, we can teach it and teach it and teach it that the power of God lives inside of you. Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. You can teach this and have it in your intellect, but until you have the revelation of just knowing it's not enough. See, I, I have a I have a Duramax truck, and that Duramax or uh, GMC, it's got a lot of power. GMC, God's magnificent chariot. GMC, God's magnificent chariot. And I, I know that that truck has power, but it takes me to what release the power. I can sit in that, that, that truck all day long and, and just know that it has the power to run the speed limit. <laughs> it has the power to pull my, 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 my stock trailer and my, my flatbed trailer. I can load horses. And cattle. It can pull the hills. It can do all this kind of stuff. It can pull. But if I just sit there in it and do nothing, I'm not releasing any power. It takes me to activate the power. The very same power... That is in you is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. But you have to learn how to, you have to have a rev revelation that. See, knowledge that is acted upon brings results. Well, I know who I am in Christ and who's inside me. When I begin to act on it in faith, I release that. I, I found this out in the past that, you know, in certain areas, I have more revelation, certain faith of healings than I do in other things. Why? Because, I, you know, I've experienced those things. I've seen it happen. I, I, I've stepped out in faith. I, you know, I, words of knowledge, I've come out in faith. And I've seen, that, you know, how it's just through revelation. You've you got to step out sometimes on faith. Now turn with Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to get started. We've got 30 minutes to get done. That's going to be a miracle, amen? I told Luann, I said, I said, you know, I don't really, I wish I could punt tonight, you know, and just have somebody else preach, because I said, I don't really know what I'm going to preach on. I, I've been focused on camp meeting, focused on Sunday morning, and, and so I, I just got it into, God just quickened this scripture here to me, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. I know it's talking about the whole armor of God, and we, oh, Need to read the rest of the chapter there, especially the first oh, 18, 19 verses. But verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, who's he talking to? He's talking to the church. How many is a brethren? Amen. Well, we got one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. <laughs> got a few, a few in there that's, that's born again, got God in them. Amen. All right. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the trickery, or the deceit of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness this age, against spiritual hosts of weakness in the heavenly places. Now, if you just walked in the kingdom of God and you heard the apostle Paul say, you know, tell you be strong in the Lord and the power of his might because you're fixing to get on the battlefield. Now, Paul had the knowledge and revelation that Jesus had, had defeated Satan and destroyed all his works. But he says this. He said, you're fixing to face some warfare. You're fixing to face some battles. There's some, going to be some circumstances, some storms in life that's going to come against you. You're going to have to battle against sickness, disease, you have against failure, against depression, against fear. There's things that's going to come against you. You've got to make a stand against it. He said, be strong. Be strong. Look at the word in verse 10 there. It says, and in the power of his might. Now, that word power there is not the word dunamis in the Greek. It's not miracle working power. So what is it? It's the Greek word kratos, K-R-A-T-O-S. And it means dominion. Dominion. Dominion means this. It means that uh, it means to lord over, lord or rule over something. Remember in Genesis chapter 2, when God created man, he gave him what? Dominion over this earth. So if, if man has dominion over this earth, should the th- who else was here on earth? Satan and a third of his angels. Amen. And so uh, he had dominion over all this earth. That's a lot of dominion. Psalm 124 says, God says, the heavens are God's, but the earth he's given to man. So, scripturally, this is your turf. This is your turf. That's why when you begin to walk in spiritual authority, you can say, tell the devil to go to hell. You say, that's not being very nice. Well, that's where he deserves to go. And guess what? That's his final outcome. That's where he's going to end up. There is a place called hell. That's where he'll spend eternity, the lake of fire. He'll be bound up and chained. He won't ever come back out again. Amen? And so uh, in your life, Peter says this, resist the devil. That's telling the devil to go to hell. Just put your hand in his face say, go to hell. So that's, you're cussing, Pastor. No, I'm not cussing. I'm just sending him to a location out of my life and somewhere else. Amen? All right. So the word... Power there means dominion, which means to lord over or rule over. So let's just read it this way. Find my brother and be strong in the Lord and in the dominion of his might. You cannot have dominion unless you have authority. You, you, you can't have dominion over, over your house. You can't have dominion over your life. You, you can't have dominion over what, what God has blessed you with unless you have authority. When you have dominion over your life, the, the sphere of your life, the realm of your life, which includes your family, your children, your grandchildren, all around you, your health, your, your finances, everything, unless you have authority, authority, you can't have dominion. And Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the dominion of his might. Authority is worthless Unless you have the power to back it up. What Jesus said, he, he said he gave them, he, he delegated them, he imparted them power over all the enemy and authority over all the enemy and power over all sickness and over all disease. Amen? Does that know what Jesus said? So, if I have authority but I don't have the power to back it up, it's useless. Remember Barney Fife? I mean, Barney Fife. <laughs> now, some of y'all are too young for Barney. But pa- Barney, he was a little skinny cop that worked for Andy. Is that his name, Andy? Andy Newberry. Or no, who? 
Griffith in Mayberry. There we go. And Barney, he had a badge, and he had authority there in Mayberry. He packed a forty-five on his hip, but he had no bullets. Remember that? See, he had a, <laughs> it went in his pocket. <laughs> He had, he had authority, but he had no power to carry it out. So God wants you to walk in the power, but he also wants you to walk in authority. And you got you to have authority and power. You, you, you can't, you can't um, I can have authority somewhere, but if I don't have the power to back it up, it's useless. If I, I have, we get back to dominion, I say my house is my dominion. That's my domain. The devil has no right to bring anything to my house. And there's times that I had to physically keep some things out of my house because as the priest of the home, I'm the protector and provider and the, and the overseer of my house. So there's things I wouldn't allow in my house. When our kids were, uh, when we was going through some hard times with Brandy, she tried to bring in some of this, this music that was ungodly, unmoral, and bring in things that just, we don't allow that in our house. You live here in this, you live here, you got a bed, we'll feed you, we'll clothe you, but you can't bring that junk into our house. This is back before we had the CDs or had the old cassettes. And I don't know how many cassettes I tore up. Well, she had CDs because I tore up CDs too. Because, I, you know, I'm not going to allow certain things in my house. Why? Because I have dominion over my house. And I have authority over my house because I'm the priest of the house. And having authority, I have the power over my house to say yes or no. Well, let's just get really, let's just shrink this thing down. Oh, you're the temple of the living God. So do you have dominion over your life? The Bible says you do. Well, Paul said in, in Romans chapter 6, he says, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Yet Christians always say, we allow, allow sin in their life and it causes, brings death and it, it brings all consequences and all these problems. You say, well, you know, Pastor, I couldn't help you. Yeah, you could. Paul said, sin shall no longer have dominion. No, you, you got dominion, you, you, but you got you to gotta use authority to have dominion. Well, let me take you a step further. Uh, did God create sickness for you? No. Did God create cancer? No. Oh, uh, does God allow cancer? Yes. God allows it. God allows things. But remember Paul? Paul had a thorn in the flesh. And many people say, well, you know, he, had, he was crippled, he was blind. Uh, uh, well, maybe he was crippled. I don't know. Maybe he was blind. He got healed because he got his eyesight restored. But remember what he said. He said, there's been a messenger from Satan that came to buffet me. In other words, there's a roaring lion that keeps attacking me. Every time I'm trying to, to perform what God's called me to do, there's always a blockage. There's something blocking me. There's something hindering my ministry. There's something that's attacking my life. I've been through some shipwrecks. I've been through some storms. I've been stoned. I've been beaten. And he said, oh, I've asked God three times to take away. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Well, that grace is not, the, not a freedom word there. It's a power word. Why is it a power word? Because when Paul had a God encounter, he got the fullness of God inside of him. And being a child of God, he had the power and authority. And we're going to see some revelation that, 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 that Paul had. Amen? All right. Your spiritual dominion and authority must be able to reach into the unseen to battle those things that you see and feel. Paul said this, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. See, our, uh, maybe you're going through a, a, a dispute with somebody in your life. It's not them that you're battling. It's the enemy working through them. It's an unseen power. Uh, if, if your husband is rebelling and, and uh, committing adultery and having all these, he's being abusive and everything there, and you, you want to whip up on him, well, 
off the record, you can. <laughs> if he's beating up on you, you know, call the cops. But scripturally, it's not him. He, he's, he's, there's something working through him that you have authority and dominion over. See, when you and I begin to learn how to walk in spiritual authority, that things are going to change around your life. Find out who you are in Christ. So Paul said, you're not, you're not wrestling against things that you see, but here's what you are against principalities, against rulers, and against the ruler, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of witness places in heavenly places. In other words, if you and I could see with spiritual eyes, there's a lot of fighting going on up here around us. Remember Daniel when he said that, oh, he said, I've been praying and praying and praying, and I didn't get no answer. And then all of a sudden, they didn't see, he said, I've been here earlier, but he said, I've been going through a major battle. I, I, we heard you, we heard you oh, cry for help and said, we, I came to bring you the answer, but I've been going through a battle for you up here. See, so you and I, you, we're fighting spiritual battles. That, that, that thing that's coming against you is it, it, not fleshly. It's usually somewhere in the spiritual realm. And the only way you can overcome it is through uh, spiritual warfare, through taking authority over that entity. Amen? All right. So you, you, can't, you, you can't see sickness. Maybe you can get through a microscope and see a bacteria or a, a virus or a cancer cell. But, I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't really see sickness. You can see what? The symptoms. You can feel the symptoms. So you're battling against this thing. Now remember, keep this in mind what Jesus said, that he gave them power and authority over all the enemy and, all, and to cure diseases. All right? You can't see fear. You can see the manifestation of fear. You can't see depression, but you can see that. See, that, that, that's something you've got to battle in the spiritual realm. Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In is a location. Say, in is a location. I can be in church and not be in church. See, I can be in church and not connected and not be in church. And Paul said, be strong in the Lord. It's a location. It's a position. And in the power of his might. Let me just, let me just prove this to you. You don't have to turn there. Oh, in Mark chapter 9, remember the story there where the, the, oh, this man came to Jesus. He said, you know, I've got this son there, and he's, oh, he's going through torment and convulsion and throwing himself down and all this kind of stuff. And, and he said, the disciples, they couldn't do anything about him. They, you know, they tried to cast this thing out, and they couldn't cast anything out. Y'all remember that story? Yeah. And uh, Jesus said, oh, if only you believe it's possible. He said, God says, I believe. And so Jesus set the young man free. And then he took his disciples privately, it says. He didn't embarrass them in front of everybody. Now, remember, these are the same guys that he gave, delegated all the power and authority he had. All the authority that Jesus got from God, he delegated that same power to his disciples, his followers. And he said in privately, he said, this kind doesn't come out except through prayer and fasting. Were you saying, well, you know, is there a different kind? Good to see you, Brother Hanky. Praise God. Oh, um, you mean there's a, they're saying, Jesus, you mean there's another kind? There's a different level of devil? No. Just one kind of devil. Did he not give them all power over all demons? Well, if they had all power over them, how come, how come they couldn't come out? Is this a special kind? I mean, is this a special forces kind that caused this boy to convulse? No, he, what does he do? He rebukes him for their unbelief. Why were they unbelieving? Why do you say they just come out with prayer and fasting? 
is because what happens when you pray and fast? You get in union with God. When, when you begin to really seek God and pray to God, see, these guys, sometimes we get in ministry and we just kind of fly on our own. And I kind of think, oh, well, these guys were doing that. They were going around. They, they, were, they were healing the sick and casting out devils and thought, man, look at me. I got a, I got a ministry right here. There. I'm going to get me a TV program, and I'm going to write me some books and all this kind of stuff. I'm casting out devils and healing the sick there. And all of a sudden, they come to this one there, and, and oh, they said, in Jesus' name, go. And the kid just throws himself down crawls at the mouth and throws a fit. And they kept saying, in Jesus' name, it wasn't working. He said, it's because you got out of location. Be strong where? In the Lord. Be strong in the power of his what? Might. And so we, in t to walk in spiritual authority, we have to stay in position with God. Remember the seven daughters of Sceva? They were, they were trying to do what the apostles did and didn't work very good. See, not in position with God. So when we begin to take spiritual authority, maybe you've been trying to take spiritual authority over something there and it ain't working, so you're blaming God. It ain't God's fault. Try a little prayer and fasting. Because... Here's what prayer and fasting do. It'll bring you close to God where you'll hear the voice of God. And if there's anything, you know, it's where fasting is where we deny ourselves, and it takes that denying of ourselves. You know, I, I was driving up here tonight, and here's what the Holy Spirit showed me, that, um, you know, Jesus walked in. I mean, he, he exercised complete power and authority over I mean, he, he spoke creative words. People got healed. He just said, be healed. And Jesus, rise and walk. Oh, nothing was impossible. We, we saw creative things happen. We saw a fig tree die. We, we saw the dead raised. You know, the reason Jesus came as a man was to show us how man should operate on this earth with the power of God inside of him. He was all God. But here's the key. He was totally, completely submitted to God. And if you, you know, let me just ask you this. How much of God's power do you want walk, flowing through your life? You can say, well, I just want enough to get me to heaven. That's all I want. Well, that's probably all you're going to get. But, I, I mean, if you want to walk in the power and authority of God in your life and, and walk over circumstances, that have circumstances walk over you. You know, it's going to take some sacrifice. Jesus said that he... Paul said this about Jesus. He, he made himself no reputation. He denied every desire that he wanted on his side. But we got we got we got Duck Dynasty. We got well, we got to watch TV. We got a, all these kind of programs. We got. To, I'm, I'm guilty as y'all are, and I'm wondering, you know, why why can't we walk in more power? I mean, read sometimes the stories of a Smith Wigglesworth. He wouldn't even allow a newspaper in his house. But we won't watch the Housewives of Beverly Hills. Counting cars. Pawn stars. See? We gotta learn how to deny our, deny ourselves. Jesus said, you know, if you want to follow me, he said, deny yourself. Man, we got a lot of desires, we gotta learn how to deny. That's why I want to encourage you just take these 15 days be so important to to deny these things that, that we really want to do i mean our, our old selfish our old nature ephesians chapter one wind down here verse 17 Paul is praying a prayer, but let me just start off with a, with a prayer. It says that he's praying that God of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to just, I want to do this a little bit different. I, you know, I want you, I want to just encourage you to read, not, not read a prayer, but 
memorize the, this scripture here and, and, and pray it out loud every day. Just make this your personal prayer. And just see in a week's time what God does in your life. So let's just pray. Let's put in, you know, sometimes I read scriptures. I, I, I put my name in there or I put me or I put I in there because, you know, I, I believe that the word of God here is God's word speaking to me. So I, I just put myself in there. It, it's just like God's letter to me. So let's just begin to read it. Let's read it out loud. I know some of y'all reading different translations. The Lord God of my Lord Jesus Christ. Say, my Lord, uh, God, my Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, out loud. The Father of glory may give to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Isn't that good? God, may you give me the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and revelation of him. The eyes of my understanding be enlightened that I may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me? And what is the, what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards me who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Amen. Somebody might have caught that tonight. Just begin to pray that. Let me just read on here. It says in verse 20 that according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him from his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and right, might and dominion, and every name is named above, not only this age, but also in, age in which it is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills in all. I read it kind of fast, but I want to just kind of come back and kind of go through it here. Um, he says that he, that we might know the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, the believers who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. You know, that's the greatest display of God's power that's ever been recorded. Jesus Christ. Well, you can say, well, Lazarus was raised from dead in four days. That's, that's greater. No, I'm going to tell you why it was greater. It's because every demonic entity in hell was trying to keep him in the grave. Try to keep him in the grave. They did everything they could do to kill him because they recognized who he was. And then when, they, when he said, I will rise again, they knew they had to keep him in the grave. So it was the, I believe it was the greatest power that, uh, that's ever been manifested because all of hell tried to keep him in the grave. I'm going to prove that to you. Look, look in, uh, let me read to you out of 1 Corinthians, out of the New Living Testament, chapter 2. I'm going to paraphrase through here a little bit. Paul says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. Verse 5 says, I did it so you would not trust in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Yet when I, among mature believers, I do speak words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rules of this word, world who are soon forgotten. See, there, there, there's, a, there, there's a level we need to get to mature spiritually to, to receive some revelation. But also, uh, we're to have more wisdom than the world out here has. Amen? But most Christians don't walk in that wisdom. Now, look here. Verse 7 says, know the, wisdom, uh, know the wisdom we speak is the mystery of God, His plan that was previously hidden, even though He made it for ultimate glory before the world began. Verse 8 says, I get hold of this. But the rulers of this world, who's he talking about? Remember Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood against powers, principalities, and rulers of darkness. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. For if they'd known, they would have not have crucified our glorious Lord. See, they... <laughs> Satan thought he had a plan. 
he thought, man, I, I recognize who Jesus is. I recognize he came to, to restore authority to mankind. And he said, I don't want him restoring the authority to, the, to the, those that follow him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to destroy him. And so when he killed him, they laughed in hell. They had a, they had a, they were rejoiced in hell because they killed the king of glory. But then three days later, in fact, before three days happened, the Bible says he disarmed everything Satan had. He took away the keys that Satan had. Keys represent authority. See, people that have authority have keys to this building. He took away all the keys of authority that, that Satan had over man. How did Satan get authority? He took it from man through deception. And here, here Jesus is. He, he's got all the keys. He's releasing the prisoners. And all of a sudden, they think he, he's finished. He's dead. He's gone. And all of a sudden, three days later, he walks out of that tomb there. And we might know the greatness that word know, just not intellectually, it means to have this knowledge, this, this knowing, this, uh, this revelation inside of us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead works in you and I. Paul said, I might know him in the power of his resurrection. God in you, the hope of glory. He worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. The right hand is always symbolic of power and authority. Now, let's go right back just a step here. We just kind of build on step upon step. God has intrinsic authority over all the universe. He, 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 he can call things to not be as though they were. He can create things out of nothing. God can heal any disease, raise any dead person. God, God, there's nothing, absolutely nothing impossible with God. All things are possible with God. He, he has authority over every entity, every power, every principality on the earth. But God, listen to this, God doesn't always exercise it, even though he has complete authority. Because God's plan was to give man this earth and dominion over it. And so... When Satan stole authority, that's, that's what he stole. See, that's what sin gets you. It'll take authority away from you. You living in sin in your life, you lose your authority. That's what happened to Adam. He lost all authority. And then the circumstances of life start beginning to hit him. Jesus restored the authority, or, or, or Jesus said all authority has been given to me. He, he couldn't take it. It had to be delegated to him. By the Father. Father God said, I give you all authority, Jesus. All authority on heaven and earth. That's why Jesus says, you can pray this way. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You, you can bring all the kingdom's authority right here on earth. And then Jesus, being God's representative, delegated that same authority. He, he didn't downsize. He, he, he says, he gave them the power. Disciples. You say, well, you know, he's talking about 12. He did it also to the 70. Then we find out also to the 120. And then we saw it to the early church. And then who's to ever believe? Had, had, fire hadn't diminished. The authority hadn't diminished. See, we just relinquished authority in fire. He said he seated Jesus in his right hand in the heavenly places. So God the Father's in heaven. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Where's the Holy Spirit? So we are the temple of the living God. Now look here where he put Jesus. Far above. Far above. I like that. Not just a little ways over. Just said far above. All all principalities and power and might 
and dominion. Come on now. I'll be, I might be a Presbyterian here to shout here. And he put him above every name that is named, not only in this age that hasn't ever, we haven't even developed a word for it. See, AIDS hadn't just been a, it's just been a new word here. But in Jesus' time, it wasn't AIDS. But 21st century, 20th century had AIDS come around, above AIDS. Also, not only this age, but also in which is to come, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Is he talking about a building there? No. Who's the church? Were you me the church? And what did he tell Peter? He said, I give you the keys. I give you the authority here on earth. Whatever you loose on earth, be loose. Whatever you bound, bind on earth, be bound. And the gates of what will not prevail against what? Who's talking about the church? He's not talking about a building, the name. He's talking about the church. You and I are the church. Because it says here in verse 23, he says, He put him to be head over all things to the church. You want to know who head of this church is? Jesus. Jesus. Over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So, rise up, church. Get your position in him. Be strong in him. Begin to run over the devil instead of letting the devil run over you. Begin to run over life instead of have life run over you. Begin to walk in the circumstances instead of having the circumstances walk over you. Amen? Oh, there's, there's a lady here. I just show me as we start the service. And it's a female trouble. Where's my wife? Is she in the sanctuary? She's gone. Okay, okay. All right. Oh, Miss Judy, you need to come down on this for me, please. Oh, it's a female problem. And, and on the female track, God just showed me it's like, I hate to use this word, but like a corn, or we get corns on our feet. It's like callus, just hardness right there in some areas. And it's, it's, it's causing pain. And God says, I'm healing you right now. That's you to respond right now. Female track. Does that bear witness somebody? Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, might have missed it. But I hope you didn't miss it because God said response will bring healing. So that's you just one more chance. If you've got, if you've got some oh, calluses or like scar tissue, hardness in ovaries area, have it pain, just step out. Well, Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. God, we thank you for your word. And God, we thank you that uh, the inheritance we have is your children, God. We thank you for the, the authority you've given us, Father God, over the enemy, over situations in our life. 